Hi there everyone, it's good to be back again. I'm Petra, I'm a life coach and an advocate for survivors of narcissistic and emotional abuse. Now I received a, uh, a message from someone on Instagram, a lady on Instagram, and I'll call you Miss B, you know who you are. Um, and the question was, how do I cope with a healthy relationship after a narcissistic re relationship? And the truth is you do not cope. Relationships are not about coping. Relationships are about developing, about growing, about giving, about taking. That is what relationships or healthy relationships are about. And when you feel that you have to cope in a healthy relationship, then, you know, those are red flags that you should pay attention to because those red flags are warning you that you are self-sabotaging in a healthy relationship. And this is due to the fact that you have these beliefs, you have a certain program that you follow in your mind, you have been conditioned from either a younger um, a time in your life when you were very young, or from the abusive relationships there that you have been in, you are then conditioned to think and feel and be a certain way. And when you do not deal with those issues, or as I prefer to call them, with those core wounds, then you just go about doing whatever you have been doing. You go about reproducing behavior, which ultimately results in the breakdown of a healthy relationship as well, because you are unconsciously self-sabotaging. So the best thing to do when you have come out of a narcissistic relationship, the very first thing you have to do is take a lifelong vacation from toxicity and then go about clearing up the toxicity that is in your own system. And when I say toxicity in your system, it's not to put blame or shame or guilt onto you. It is again talking about these core wounds that you have, that have been inflicted upon you um, in whatever stage of your life. And this is all about uh, taking that vacation or that holiday from toxicity and getting up in your own business. So really developing a friendship and relationship with yourself. That is really the key uh, thing to do and that is the way to go when you have left uh, a toxic relationship. Now when you take that time off and you take the time to first to calm down, to get your prior priorities straight, to see where, um, where you are bleeding really, what those core wounds are. This is the time you need because if you do not take that time out to tell the absolute truth about what you have been through, what you have, have experienced, what you yourself have contributed to all your relationships in the past, then there is no way you are going to be able to complete a healthy relationship because these issues will keep coming up. So. It's about uncovering the shadow side. We all, each and every one of us has a shadow side. And oftentimes we do not want to look at that shadow side because it, it uh, triggers a certain part of us that is either painful or it's shameful or it makes us angry or it makes us aggressive. And these are the parts that we do not want to look at because I mean, who wants to be in the shadow? No one wants to look at that shadow side. But looking at that shadow side and acknowledging all the different aspects of it is what is going to allow you to tell your absolute honest truth. And in telling your truth, that is how you can uncover those wounds and go about healing them. And of course, it is something that you cannot... There are flies here, sorry. There, of course, it is not something that you can do on your own. Oftentimes you need help, professional help doing this, uh, help of a, of a uh, psychologist or a therapist or a coach. Um, this is how you can go about healing these wounds. But it is the bottom line in this, in this whole adventure and in this whole process of healing is that you be truthful and you tell 
every single aspect of that truth, every single aspect of that shadow side of you. And don't say you don't have one because we all have one. You know, we all have those shadow sides. We all have the places that we do not want to go to. And those places are shame. They are guilt. They are people pleasing. They are feeling unworthy, feeling inadequate, not setting boundaries. So you go about um, infesting really or, or placing a form of toxicity in the relationships that you get into. And when we are looking for healthy and wholesome relationships, the best place to start or the first place you should start is with yourself. You need to do that. So it is also about allowing yourself time to grieve because when you have come out of a toxic relationship, you as a healthy, loving person are going to miss that relationship. You are going to miss um, the person you were involved with. You are going to really miss the illusion and, you know, when we first come out of the, these relationships, we do not realize that we were really dealing with a disordered person, dealing with an illusion of love. But further on down the line, when you allow yourself to tell that truth, that is when you can also come to terms and accept the fact that you were actually in love with an illusion. And whilst accepting that fact, it is quite okay to say that you miss that person, that you long for that person, you yearn for them. These are all very natural feelings and they have to be acknowledged. You cannot say, I'm going to wipe these feelings under the rug. I'm going to sweep them under there and I don't want to look at them. No, you have to acknowledge your thoughts, whatever you think. Don't push them aside. Acknowledge those thoughts that you are having. Acknowledge the emotions and the feelings that you are having and allow yourself time to grieve. Because acknowledging and allowing you yourself the time is being compassionate towards yourself. And this is very often what targets of narcissistic abuse um, do not allow themselves. They do not allow themselves that compassion. They um, go into a frenzy, I should say we, because I went through the same frenzy. You go into this frenzy of where you, you think, how could I have done better? How could I have uh, been more compassionate to the other person? How could I have been more loving? Perhaps I am the narcissist. You know, all these thoughts go through our minds. And this is where compassion comes in. This is where the silence comes in. You need to get silent with yourself and you need to be committed to having that inner dialogue with yourself to look at those shadow parts and to bring them out into the light. So it is also about practicing self-love. And, you know, it's not self-love from an ego point of view. Oftentimes when we find ourselves involved in toxic relationships, it is because there was a lack of self-love, a lack of self-respect, a lack of, of personal boundaries. And this is how we um, tolerate abuse to a certain level. I mean, in, in most cases, you get to a certain point in your life where you say, enough is enough. I am not going to tolerate this anymore. And this is when we leave. This is when uh, we are discarded, when we start to set those boundaries with the toxic person. This is when, um, this is something a toxic person does, of course, not, not tolerate themselves. They do not tolerate the fact that you have had the audacity to set a healthy boundary. But these are the parts of it. This, this is what I mean by shadow work uh, and, and the shadow side of us. This is how we need to look and, and clean out that shadow part. Not saying that there's not going to be more shadow parts coming up as we go along life's journey, but it is about cleaning up the wounds that are paralyzing your future and that are ultimately going to paralyze, um, or, or how they paralyze your present, excuse me, and how they are ultimately going to paralyze your future if you do not get in and deal with them. Because we all know what toxicity is. We all know what abusive relationships look, look like. They are where you are being degraded, dismissed, dishonored, um, where you are not being loved, where you are being abused, whether that is physically, verbally, emotionally, psychologically. It's all abuse. That is unhealthy. 
You know, those kinds of relationships are, are scrambled, they make no sense. They are very destructive relationships. And if we do not take the time to start um, looking at our individual side, if we do not take the time to sit and get our vision for our lives uh, clear, look at our values, what core values do you hold? How do you want to project yourself in life? How do you want to come across in life? How do you want to show up in life? What do you want from yourself? What do you need and want from your partner? Have you shown a partner um, how it is that you wish to be loved? You know, this is a very important um, um, value that we forget, is that we don't realize how we truly want to be loved. And because we don't realize this, we do not know how to communicate how we want to be loved to our partners. And ultimately, this is where we, this is where the, the, the chapter comes in of us just settling for the crumbs instead of ordering that seven course meal. So we settle with crumbs because it gives us a very temporary feeling of being loved when in fact that is really not what is happening. It is just that we are oftentimes afraid of being alone. We are afraid of going through life on our own without a life partner. And so we will settle for anything that shows up. So again, what it boils down to is being absolutely honest with yourself. Realizing where you yourself are dishonoring your values, disrespecting yourself, tolerating any kind of abuse just to get a little bit of love from the toxic person. And this is where we need to set personal boundaries for ourselves and to say, I will not tolerate this anymore. I will not allow myself to be disrespected anymore. And when doing that, also looking at yourself to say, see where you yourself have been disrespectful towards yourself, where you have dishonored and degraded yourself and dismissed all your core values in life. This is what it is all about. So at the end of the day, it is not about learning how to cope with a new healthy relationship. It's learning about how to get real, to get honest and to get loving towards yourself, to establish that friendship and that level of individuality that we all need in order to be whole, a whole person. And when we are a whole person, this is when we are going to show others how they need to love us and how they need to treat us. So thank you again for watching. Very short video, but I will be back um, as soon as possible. Please keep your questions and your comments uh, coming in and your emails. Thank you so much again for, um, I just noticed the other day that um, we have reached above 11,000 subscribers, all of us together on board. And I would just like to thank you from the bottom of my heart for, uh, for doing that, for subscribing, for sharing the videos, for commenting underneath the videos and for getting in touch so, uh, so as we can go on your journey together of healing uh, through coaching. So thank you once again, everyone, and uh, take care of yourselves. Speak to you all very soon again. Bye for now.